Mark Cuban went on recently with SiriusXM to talk a little bit about Mavericks free agency, uh, the realignment of the Western Conference, among many other things. But really what I wanted to focus on was his comments regarding free agency for the Dallas Mavericks, what we expected and what we got. Let's take a look. You know, but you all, you didn't really get overly aggressive this this off. Oh yeah, we did. Well, well, yeah, know, we did. Not, not now your you're way. fighting instead of me. Yeah, and right. Go yeah. ahead. Hell yeah, we did. Come on, Eddie. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he did not. I fight. think you normally get what you <laughs> want. Yeah, not not even right. But our first and foremost was keeping our existing free agents, or keeping right. our guys right. Right. That's most important because, you know, we we can go look for the the prettier person on the other side of the street. But if you don't keep your guys, you don't have a squad, right? Right. And there's there's value to bringing somebody in, but you know you get that what what Nelly used to call corporate knowledge. Mm -hmm. The longer you keep a, keep a team together, then the better they know how to play with each other. And so there's there's a value there. And plus we have two really young, hopeful cornerstones, right? And so it's more about keeping all those guys together and building together. And so yeah, we you know we were interested in Kemba. That was the one name associated with it. We were interested, and you know we didn't expect Al Horford to opt out. You know, who knew that would happen? And so when, when, when he decided to stay closer to home and, and go to Boston, well, we had to adjust. And, you know, after Kemba, when Kemba wasn't really going to be available, um, the start of free agency, our first call literally was DeLon Wright because we wanted somebody that could defend next to Luca. And most of our guys, particularly our, our ones and twos, were walk it up guys. DeLon's a downhill guy who can defend multiple positions. We'll work with him some in the shop, but he's a great finisher. You know, he can get to the rim, he'll make the play. He help, helps make his other teams better, um, his, other, his teammates better, and that's what we were looking for. Because trying to get Luca to guard point guards, it's not gonna work. And so, you know, and with um, Jalen Brunson, he did a great job as a rookie and he'll get better, but his strength still is, is he's still learning to stay in front of guys. DeLon is there, and DeLon's a passer, creator, but now we'll start, 6'5 will be our smallest guy in the starting lineup. That changes who we are. I don't know about that, Mark. I don't know about that. Now, you're telling me that your second call your first call was to Kimba. Done, over, out. Your second call was to DeLon Wright. I actually am optimistic about DeLon Wright. I see enough there based on the contract he got and what it could have been, what it was valued at. I see enough there to see that, okay, this is a good recovery move, but this is by no means your second call. I don't buy that. He comments in the clip, oh, well, you know, we didn't know Al Horford was going to be there. I mean, we couldn't have expected that. Okay. And there was all these mixed messages going into free agency that you were interested in Al Horford or no, that four-year, $100 million offer wasn't coming from us. No, not at all. A lot of flip-flopping going on with that. And in the end, you aren't involved in that he the hundred million dollar offer sounds like it was coming from the sacramento kings and then horford basically said yeah that's nice but no thanks i'm gonna get a another ballpark deal over here instead with the 76ers so i'm confused for what mark is saying here i don't buy that your second call was literally delon wright Man, how many days off did you take if DeLon Wright was your second call? There's no way. You just got that done. I understand that it's a process. It's not like it was brought up for the first time the day that the deal came down, the sign and trade with Memphis. But even still, it wasn't that pricey of a deal. It was two second round picks and the rights to Satnam Singh in exchange for DeLon Wright. And then you gave him a three-year, $29 million contract. I feel like this is this is Mark trying to spin things, right? And Carlisle has said something similar. He's gone out as well, and you know he's always going to say, "Well, you know, we like our team. We like what we did." You're not going to go out there, and the last thing you'd want to do as a coach or an owner is be like, Ugh, "Yeah, we thought we were going to get Kimba, didn't work out. We thought we were going to get Al Horford, not really, but you know, we we thought maybe didn't work out." And, you know, then we ended up, you know, Seth, we brought him back. I feel all right about that. Bobby, yeah, that, okay, cool. That's an attraction, I guess. 
Uh, what else? DeLon Wright. There you go. Oh, where's my whiskey? I need some real top-notch scotch right now. You don't want to go out there and send that signal because all it's going to do is undercut the chemistry and the the general good vibe within your organization, within your franchise. And with the Mavericks, they've had more than enough problems with that in recent years anyway. Not so much on the basketball side, but in general. So I look at this and I say, I don't believe you on your second call being for DeLon Wright. I think your second call was Danny Green, and that didn't work out. Plan A was Kimba. Plan B was probably Danny Green. And when you missed on that, then DeLon Wright was something like plan C or D. And that's not even including the failed Miami trade, the three-team trade that involved Jimmy Butler. That got done in a different form without the Mavericks. But we went from hearing, oh, we're getting Kelly Olenek, who's like 27 years old, hasn't really performed since he got his money in Miami. But, you know, he was serviceable and a, a decent role player for Boston. So there's something. Uh it was getting him. Then there was a question of, oh, did the Mavericks get Goran Dragic? No, no, they didn't. All right, well, he's had a lot of injuries in recent years, and he's definitely slowed down, and he's making $19 million, so that's not a super desirable contract, even though uh, it's another player that Luka has a personal relationship with and whom there's great fondness. But, yeah, I I don't know, man. You know, And then, of course, it's like Derek Jones Jr. Uh, I, I just don't buy... I don't buy a lot of stuff in this equation here for the Mavericks. It doesn't make sense to try and spin it and kind of almost insult the fans' intelligence, your own fans' intelligence, to be like, yeah, our second course of action was DeLon Wright. And Carlisle talked about how, oh, well, you know, when he was coming out of the draft in, I think, 2015, the year the Mavericks got Justin Anderson, oh, we really liked DeLon Wright and Anderson, and there was another guy we really liked. We wound up with Anderson, and, you know, we liked him as well. But uh, we had interest in DeLon Wright all the way back then. He wound up instead in Toronto, uh, was behind DeRozan and all that for a little while. And then eventually, as part of the Mark Gasol trade, got moved to Memphis, where he was able to be, you know, pretty much buried behind Mike Conley for most of the year. But late in the year, I think three of the last four games of the season— he recorded triple doubles. He's now second, I believe, all time in franchise history for the Grizzlies in triple doubles. And he's the only guy to ever do it in three three times in four games. So weird, weird stuff there. He's not a shooter, not a great shooter. They'll have to work with him on that. Again, I think he's a fine piece. He's a 6'5 point guard, like Mark says in the clip. 6'5 point guard, versatile defender. Uh, passes well, attacks well. He's a downhill guy. And, you know, he's got touch. If you can put if you can fill out triple doubles stat lines you're a pretty well-rounded player in that regard and it helps as well that two of those three last year came against the Mavericks you know you could say hey well the Mavericks were kind of in tank mode but I would argue it was Dirk's second to last home game and then the game right after that so really Dallas as as you saw the Mavericks going towards that finish line of Dirk's career last year you saw the team fighting harder to win for him like that Phoenix game, that last home game, you know, Mavericks go up huge. Jamal Crawford's insane uh, shooting brings Phoenix all the way back in. And when it got, like, clinch-worthy tight, uh, you saw the Mavericks answer. And if it wasn't Dirk's last home game, I don't know that they bother to answer. I think they just kind of ride off quietly into the sunset. And that wasn't the case. So I, I think that the opposite is kind of true. I think the team kind of fell out of tank mode because I think they won like five of their last 10 games, I want to say. They went out of tank mode during that final stretch, trying to win as much as they could for Dirk, seeing that finish line in place. So uh, for DeLon Wright to get back-to-back triple doubles against the Mavericks, and I, like I said, three out of four games to close the year, that's, that's pretty uh, quality work right there. He's a fine piece. I think he's probably your day one starter at point guard, but... Don't don't act like we weren't promised a lot. We were told how aggressive you were going to be in free agency and how eager you were to pair significant firepower with Luka and KP. Now, that was probably your Kemba or your Danny Green, but when those didn't pan out, you can't now look me in the eye and tell me, yeah, DeLon Wright, that's our significant firepower. 
No. No, it's not. It's a nice player. It's a nice role player. On an agreeable contract. It's not firepower. Seth Curry, his career stats don't pop off the page. His career three-point percentage will pop off the page. Obviously, I think he's like 43% for his career. Shot 45% last year. Uh, His one year he actually played in Dallas, the 16-17 season was phenomenal. He was quickly becoming one of my favorite Mavericks. But it's... I'm glad to have him back. I really am. And I got more content coming out for you guys. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go over some actual breakdown, reaction, and analysis of tape on guys like Kristaps Porzingis, Seth Curry, Luca's rookie year, DeLon Wright himself. We're going to go through some of these and just give you guys, you know, let you see a little bit of what they can bring to the table. And then I'm going to give you my reaction to these plays. But uh, yeah, it's. I feel like this is a bait and switch by Dallas, that this is like trying to retroactively go back and change what the framing and messaging was and what the expectation should have been uh, this summer because Dallas is Dallas missed out on pretty much everything that they wanted to do, everything they tried to do. And while they did make some good little moves along the way, you can't tell me that all the fire, all the hype we were hearing, all that smoke that we were hearing about oh, I think fans are going to be really happy. And, oh, we have Dallas is up to something. We have significant interest here. There were, it was everywhere. And I understand that, again, coming from a national perspective, you can't trust everything. But even at the local level, we were hearing it. We were hearing enough of it to suggest that we should have expected more than Seth Curry, as much as I love him, Boban, uh, DeLon Wright, and I mean, they, there's a couple other small moves in there as well, but nothing, nothing huge. This the main thing, and Mark says it in the clip. Dallas wanted to bring back their free agents, their restricted free agents from last year's team, because above all, they didn't want to lose the core that they had in place. They were that confident in how much they liked it. Now I feel like they got good deals on each of those guys coming back. But that is interesting that that was their focus as opposed to adding significant firepower. Like Kemba, great. Love the the idea. Uh, I don't know that it's the best idea, but I love the swing big mentality here. But with your next move from that being, all right, let's go to Danny Green. Like that's that's a sizable step back in approach. Not to say Danny Green wouldn't have been a phenomenal weapon for this team. He would have been. But then it's like another massive step back to saying, Delon Wright, that's your guy. Sorry, Mark, I don't I don't buy it. I, you're you're trying to go back and change what the perception was and act like we were the ones who were silly and like nobody was actually telling us to our face that we should expect big things. Not buying it. 